Welcome to Alchemical Science. I'm Jordan, an open source researcher and alchemist and a student of the inventor and Vortex Fusion specialist, Malcolm Bendel. We're continuing on with the Miami Plasmoid road trip interviews. This one is with Brad Young. Uh, Brad has been involved with Randall Carlson for many years as a colleague, and he was there for a lot of the initial connections with Malcolm uh, and finding out about his work. He was even there in the background of the uh, the notoriously suppressed uh, Joe Rogan interview with Malcolm that may come out one day still. So he gives a little bit about his story and his background. Brad's a fantastic guy. I've uh, been working with him on a few projects, including with Ed Nightingale on the Template Research Group project. So I hope you enjoy this interview. We've got more to come from this trip and more to come in other areas as well. Good afternoon. Um, we're here in Miami and I'm here with Bradley Young, who has worked with the famous uh, sacred geometrist teacher, Randall Carlson, uh, for over 25 years. Is that right? Quarter century plus now, 1997 started wow. up, right? Wow. So would you like to tell us a little bit about your background and uh, how you got interested in sacred geometry and how you met Randall? We're going to do the quick version if I can, but yeah, Absolutely. going back to 92, I had a severe car accident and a whole series of synchronicities started showing up for me and put me on a path where I discovered that sacred geometry was actually uh, a thing, a science, a, a something that people could study and it was connected to these sacred numbers mm. and the design of not just life on earth but likely the whole universe right yeah. the shape of galaxies storms and related all these things so that kind of started a long a long path worked with a gentleman that was uh, even more santa claus than randall actually and uh, he had uh, classic illuminative experience and he wanted to recreate that because he thought it could change the world if we all realized that we were more than our bodies, that we, were, we had a soul, we could travel beyond this physical self. Mm -hmm. So I got involved with him and, and he contacted Randall and said, I got this guy working with me and you know, hopefully we'll meet. So I met Randall at a, at a conference and we were actually promoting uh, the study of the monuments on Mars. Oh. The five-sided pentagonal pyramids. pyramids that's huge in the face and wow. it was all part of the synchronicities that I learned about these things and in the process also discovered uh, Stephen Greer's work. Mm -hmm. I had a sighting of three blue discs in an equilateral triangle flying down the highway above the highway in Atlanta where I lived. I was moving, it was Easter weekend. Wow. And then a few months later I saw Stephen Greer and that that was his logo. Wow. There's three blue circles in an equilateral triangle. So just a few of the things that put me, put me on the, the way to where I got where I was meeting Randall. So it was 1997, Hale Bopp came through. Uh, Randall had a documentary on TBS, uh, mm -hmm. ended up on CNN. They played multiple, multiple times. Anytime there was news about an asteroid, they would play that. So they, they think 15 million, 20 million people have seen that. Mm. Randall's done a documentary, right? But it was 1996. Wow. So at that point, uh, I was doing an event with Stephen Greer in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. He was going to talk to uh, some of the government officials in Washington to try to get some more awareness of his work. Uh, I was more attracted to the free energy and the mm -hmm. possibility of how these crafts, if there are such things, how they're traversing vast space. You know, could we could we have a different energy system where there weren't power lines down everybody's street? And I actually was able to get on the radio in Atlanta and talk about these things in 1996. So it's kind of been way back in my background, but connected yeah. with Randall when he was speaking about Hale Bop. Uh -huh. And so due to those two events, I was able to do a radio show. I was offered the chance to do a radio show. So I had a guest that backed out on me on like a Wednesday and the show was Thursday. So I called Randall, he's like, yeah, I've never done that before, but I think I'm gonna do it a lot more. You know, all right, Randall on Joe Rogan 10 times now. So that was, that was the start of my aware state update, which 
may get revived as a, as a podcast here soon also with, with all the new things I'm learning and getting into with, with this technology studies and consciousness. I've recently spent a week at the Monroe Institute. Uh, the synchronicities do continue for sure. Wow. Uh, actually, the day I learned about the face on Mars was 928 and I was sitting there writing about how many times this number had come up. Wow. And 928, one month ago, uh, my home was flooded in North Carolina and I've been <laughs> ousted. So again, that, that number and that date has been, you know, extremely influential in my life. So, Incredible. and now here I am, I, this was unexpected. Randall invited me, it's like, let's go to Florida. I'm, I'm doing this event with the group, with Malcolm again, uh -huh. need you there. So figuring out my role in this, uh -huh. um, but yeah, jumping over lots of things there is building up to Randall and now the now, but in between 27 years of traveling, 100,000 plus miles, you know, dozens mm -hmm. of expeditions, researching mega floods and catastrophes and impact craters and wow. uh, earthworks uh, all across the U.S. multiple times. Uh, and now in the last five plus years, we're doing tours. Uh -huh. So that's, that's quite a joy to get people out there and, and see these massive scale flood effects, which actually I'm seeing in my town now. Sadly, sadly mangled things yeah. and one of probably 50 towns that are experiencing the same thing. So that's, that's mm. still heavy in my, in my head and experience now. Um, but appropriate, right? To study mega floods for 25 years and now, now I see the effects. So at some yeah. level, it's beautiful to see how nature operates and the destruction that it can cause like, like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But three days of rain, 14 inches, and then a hurricane comes in and gives seven more inches in a day and a half. So uh, devastating. Five more feet than the 100-year flood that happened in 1916. 27 Incredible. feet over 22 feet was the prior record. So, yeah, really amazing that that came around. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, it, uh, it's, uh, it's stunning in a lot of ways. And I keep uh, finding that with, with all the people that, you know, work together here and talking there's so many synchronicities I mean absolutely just, just these happen to be right here for us right in the front door um, first thing you see when we arrive yeah so Correct. just I'm not even hardly even phased by it anymore you know it's just like oh of course you know that's how life is yeah yeah if you're aligned and in the flow right these things are presented to you and it's part I of the bigger so. picture that yeah Go we're with alive in so it's interesting that you were the impetus behind getting Randall on the first podcast and then like you said here he is you know Joe Rogan and hopefully Joe Rogan again in the future well I yeah I'm sure that's coming again the invite is is always there uh -huh. uh, they're still in contact of course I was I was there for the the unaired episode um, so Randall's talked about it a little bit but yeah I was sitting outside Joe has a, a big lobby and his security guards that hang out and a, and a TV and you can watch everything that they're doing in their studio right so me and several other people that had driven down since he's moved to Texas I drive him down to the Rogan show so I've met him mm. four or five times now we haven't gotten to hang out and he hasn't gone on a expedition with us but we're in the studio so uh, yeah it was it was wild and uh, it's totally understandable why it was not put out I think at some point there will be an edited version uh -huh. that comes out of that same original you know there's there's kind of a a legend or a you know mystique about it yeah because <laughs> you know what was said so i Absolutely. think if a cut version comes out right they're still going to be yeah what did we miss this is so wild just yes. what's being shown but there's yes. there's there's some yeah uh what a concept, interesting though. intense things that went on that went on there and uh so uh -huh. i was i was there Smile for that all. so yeah so we'll see what i was going to get back to was the uh, the other synchronicity with being involved in the Rogan shows, uh, the recent one is not coming back to me right now. So, ah, well, I was it just will gonna, in a moment. Yes, I was just going to say that would be something to uh, to have uh, Joe Rogan come on one of your expeditions and tours. That would be well, and and Randall ha loves having children come on <laughs> the tours. Sometimes we've had a half a dozen from seven to seventeen, and then people up to ninety. Right. Yeah, so we yeah. got a whole range. So Randall loves having the kids. So Joe's Rogan, Joe Rogan's kids should come on there and, you know, be. put them out in the field. We would we would love that. And that may be in the process next time they meet. He might actually be able to convince him. Um, well, I mentioned before, I remember what I wanted to say, because it's I joked about kind of force gumping my way around through things. So they have 
blamed me um, for connecting Randall to Malcolm because <laughs> I have recorded Randall, been the archivist, the videographer, the photographer, the driver, the navigator for all these expeditions, colleagues, talk about the research, etc. cetera. But um, I recorded classes 15 years ago and started a, a channel on YouTube, Geocosmic Rex, okay. because I wanted to show the breadth of Randall's knowledge because people could maybe pick apart his catastrophism or his geology or his knowledge of something, but to show that he has this mass of mm -hmm. material that he can mm -hmm. speak eloquently and authoritatively about mm -hmm. and convincingly. And he's such a excellent teacher the way he explains things. And I think everybody realizes that, yeah. you know, that's his gift uh, among others, but yeah, just incredible with that. So I, I wanted to put this series of classes out and one of them was one of the little segments, not the full lecture, was about the sacred numbers and the repetition. And Malcolm found that YouTube video. Wow. And he contacted Randall because it was directly related to the 21, number 2160, which is the diameter of the moon uh -huh. and the, some of the angles in a cube. And uh, there's many, many things yes. that relate to 2160. So, uh, Incredible. Whether I'm blamed for that or that's my blamed fault, but yes. yeah, I was, so that's kind of been my role. I'm kind of the facilitator, the connector, the, you know, a lot of people call me the glue. I love uh, it. So I love it. Very needed. And, and that's, it's so interesting because there is so many, I, I mean, this is such a, a, a basic field that covers, as we keep discussing, so many previously sort of, uh, what's the word you use siloed and you know in corporate we use siloed different uh sciences right and we just kind of all go you know, everybody goes into their own lab and they discover this atom and it looks like this or it looks like that and there's got to be some truth in under underneath all that and i think that's that's where you are where, where we are with this and Definitely. you making that connection pulling and you, it all together yeah and absolutely and, and as far as Randall as a teacher, you touched on that um, a bit, and that seemed as, you know, as brilliant as he is and seeing his presentations, et cetera. His heart really is in educating and, and, and making sure people understand the sacred geometry and how to apply it to buildings and architecture. No question. And, and so what do you see in the future as far as... Um, it, perhaps you know him moving forward into that realm of really teaching broadly we would hope that there's going to be uh, an international institute mm. for the teachings of Randall Carlson right how that comes about uh, we're not sure but we're open to that he's mm -hmm. got a large curriculum already prepared mm. uh, but the the idea that keeps coming back is that we need teachers like Randall right because Randall can't teach everybody we need Randall needs to teach the teachers right so I don't know what it takes to get to that level but ultimately uh, there'll be a template for a school and a curriculum that can be taught to the young people and everybody that you know wants to learn right right so we hope to see that coming of Initially, we, would, we had said, you know, the four corners of the U.S., you know, the southeast, southwest, northwest, northeast, and maybe something right in the middle. Right. Start with that uh, and then, then go international from there. But it's a big project. Mm -hmm. um, Randall's a builder. Mm -hmm. He would like to build it himself. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Randall's got a lot to do, right? Yeah. So we'll see how that all comes together. Uh, but having but the vision concise and presentable is kind of the next the right. next step to, to really succinctly spell that out to people and, and the public and the platform that, that this new technology is going to offer could could be that very thing right I was just going to go there I mean with with this thing rolling out and Randall's contribution at least especially for the especially in the education realm as to how this whole thing works and why it's such a uni it's unified field model, unified uh, uh, model. So it would seem that this is, this is the time and people are gonna be curiouser and curiouser, I would think. Um, Absolutely. And bringing, bringing in the ancient uh, you know, sacred geometries is, uh, 
the availability of knowledge and to be able to share it with people around the globe has just been, yeah. you know, an infinite leap for us. Yeah. So we're, we're at that point where we step into the unknown, but it's going to be a beautiful thing. And, and I would wrap up um, also that Malcolm is an incredible teacher and I picked that up from him right away that he's very interested in conveying his knowledge. Yes. Uh, he speaks very fast mm -hmm. and he puts a lot in there but he's just so full of material that's pertinent and he wants to share. Uh, so I definitely connected in with him in that way that it was so obvious that his heart was in sharing. And then also uh, looking out for the planet as a whole mm -hmm. and the people. And that goes back to what I was doing for the Olympics in 1996 when I first met Randall. I was working for projects to create world peace and the people that bring that up and you feel it in their heart as a yeah. as a purpose a true purpose yeah. i have been able to connect with those people incredibly it, it's so incredible that's what how we're that moving happens. toward i believe a way to create a planet without war wow with a new system of energy and a knowledge of our higher selves in the spiritual realm and see where we can go beautiful it sounds great all right. Thank you so much, Bradley. Thank you. Brilliant. Loved it. Wonderful. Great. All right. We'll see you soon. Let's do it again. <laughs>